Is Kara the narrator of Undertale? The answer may be a little bit more complicated than you think. Now, keep in mind before this video starts, I want you to know that I didn't make this theory. In fact, based on my research on this theory, this theory has been around for at least five years, which, uh, yeah, that's a uh, very long time. And since this theory has been going around for a long time, I'm not going to be able to get around to every single detail in this video. So I think I'll just have most of the important evidence summarized. In this video, we'll be going over as much evidence as possible in support of the Kara Narrator Theory, as well as evidence that completely goes against the Kara Narrator Theory. So by the end of this video, you can make your judgments and conclusions. I ask that you be mature and respectful in the comments and make sure to subscribe and like. Enjoy the video. Let's start off with how Kara speaks in Undertale. Most of the time, Kara is completely known to speak in red text. This is so the player can differentiate between when the narrator is speaking and when Kara is speaking. And of course, this will be all nice and fine until you realize that this red text isn't consistent at all. Kara doesn't just speak in red text in Undertale. A good example is when you look in the mirror in the Genocide Root where the narrator says, it's me. Kara. Now some people would mistake this text for first talking. However, after you beat Asriel and True Pacifist and go back to the mirror, the narrator says, still just you, Friss. So the red text thing can be explained for when the narrator is very passionate about something. Now the narrator also doesn't just use red text in genocide. There are times in Pacifist where the narrator speaks in red, like when they're extremely passionate about this hole. Suffice to say that right there is a lot of evidence to support Kara as the narrator. But we need to look at a little bit more such as the narrator's personality throughout Undertale. If you repeatedly check Metaton, the narrator won't actually repeat the same check information. It actually showcases that they have some kind of personality as they grow impatient after you repeatedly check Metaton over and over again. This isn't the only time when the narrator's personality is expressed. When you take Monster Candy, the narrator will scold you for spilling it all on the floor. Or when you overly pet Lesser Dog and they say, Really? In neutral and pacifist runs, the narrator has a very expressive personality to reflect the player's actions and choices. However, in the genocide run, the narrator's personality changes along with every other character in this run. In the genocide run, their impatience grows much faster than in other instances where they just seem annoyed. The genocide run isn't the only time where the narrator's personality can be influenced like every other character. In the pacifist route, if you check the bag of dog food, the narrator's personality seems bright and enthusiastic by saying that the dog food bag is half full, but in the neutral route, the narrator will say that the dog food bag is half empty. These are both easter eggs to a question, is the cup of water half empty or half full? For people that say it's half full are more optimistic about life. For those that say half empty, they are more realistic about the reality of how disappointing life could be. Almost like the dog food bag is a good representation of the narrator of how they are viewing their life depending on your actions. Now this is all fine and dandy, but this isn't significant proof that Kara is the one narrating. So let's go over to the ending scene with True Lab. In this scene, Flowey calls you on your cell phone in Azriel's voice. During this scene, the narrator spaces out their dialogue, unlike any other moment they've had before upon hearing their voice. Almost like they had a deep reaction to hearing Azriel's voice after so long. Now let's go and talk about Serious Mode for a second. Serious Mode is a mode in Undertale where the narrator's descriptions of a battle would change. In the normal battle, the narrator would drop jokes in regards to items you have in your inventory, such as calling the butterscotch pie a butt pie. In serious mode, the funny names for items are changed to a more serious approach, such as butterscotch pie being changed to just pie. Serious mode is only present when fighting up against Toriel, Asgore, and Asriel. Kara's family. According to Kara's dialogue at the end of Genocide, Kara has been awake since the beginning of the game. Your soul, your determination, is what ultimately awoke them from their death. It wasn't until your ESP, love, gold, and more is what made Kara's personality change depending on what route you end up doing. Now, this does counteract my soul theory a little bit. According to this theory, Kara and Frisk are interconnected all the time. If Kara is the narrator, they know the exact same information that Frisk does. If you interact with the plant in Toriel's house, they said that you don't know the name of the plant. However, after reading a book about that plant, the narrator understands what that plant is as well. Now, hypothetically speaking, when exactly did Kara and Frisk combine together? You see, at the very beginning of Undertale, Frisk cannot interact with anything in this beginning room. No matter how many times you press Z here, there will be no narrator interaction at all. It isn't until you meet up with Flowey for the first time that things change. Notice how in this first battle, your name that you set is 
strangely absent, but the other stats are seemingly there. Once you have completed the flowery tutorial battle, you can go back to the starting area and interact with the golden flowers. This is the first time the narrator speaks. When you enter your next battle, the name you entered is there. Theorists claim that during this first battle is when Kara first awakens and comes to terms as to what happened. Also, considering the fact that, according to Flowey himself, it was because of him that made Kara wake up in the first place. Undertale overall has a unique narrator. You have to give it that. Most of the time, games or movies that have a narrator don't really have that much of a unique personality. In Undertale, it's almost like the narrator has a personality of their own, like any other character in the game. For example, making humor out of Snowpoffs and Snowden. In Genocide, most of this humor is skipped entirely, like not giving into the snow decahedron or rushing through inspected items. It seems that the narrator has been influenced by your decisions as well, and it seems that they want this genocide route to continue, and they want it done as fast as possible. It seems strange that the narrator of all things is the one that would want you to continue the route. The narrator is also more of a guide in both pacifist and in genocide. In genocide, for example, during the fight with Sans, they give you advice on how to end the fight as fast as possible. In pacifist, they end up giving you advice in a completely different tone to save Azriel and your friends. At the end of the Azriel fight, memories flood back to Azriel about the time when they fell into the underground. This causes Azriel to finally give in. Why would Frisk have access to these memories in the first place if they weren't the ones to go through them? Now, if I were to continue going over evidence after evidence, this video will probably end up being at least an hour long. Most of the evidence after this point I'm going to exclude because it isn't as exciting. If you want to do more research into this, I'll link several posts and guides that pretty much go over any evidence I potentially missed. Now, I'm going to go over some evidence that disproves the Kara narrator theory. Now, again, I ask you to maintain some levels of respect in the comment section. In the true lab of Undertale, the narrator glitches out to fit the atmosphere of this part of the game. However, if this was Kara speaking, it doesn't make much sense for it to actually be glitching out, as Kara is like everyone else in this world. Alphys enters the true lab as well, and you don't see her glitching out in her dialogue. Also in the true lab, as I mentioned before, I stated that the narrator's voice is stretched out to showcase Kara's reaction to hearing Asriel's voice. However, the phone ring sound effect is also stretched out. So potentially, if this was Kara's voice, why would the cell phone dialogue be stretched out as well. I mean, unless Kara is actually the cell phone this whole time. In Deltarune, there is also a narrator that has a similar tone to the narrator of Undertale. Now, we don't actually know what Kara's placement in the story of Deltarune is yet, without coming up with theories like Kara is possessing Chris or something. So, as of right now, why would Kara even be attached to Chris in the first place when the events of Undertale that caused Chris to be attached to Kara didn't actually unfold? Oh yeah, and uh, Kara's name is also absent in the genocide flowey fights.